Okay, great. Well, let's see. It's, it's top of the hour. Let's go ahead and, and kick things off again. I'm Jimmy King with Banking Bridge. I'm joined with, with Will Donovan of Own Up. He heads up Lender Partnerships, and we do monthly webinars just kind of introducing our customers and, and, the, and the community out there what's available if, if they're looking to, to get involved on the lead buying side. We try to bring in a new partner. Uh, a new idea every month, and so this month we've we've teamed up with Own Up, and uh, Will actually reached out, and we kind of said, "Well, why don't we get you on a webinar?" Uh, so we want to wanted to bring bring that to your attention and kind of talk about what makes their platform unique, um, and you know why maybe Own Up might be a good decision for you to if you're looking to spend a little bit of money in the next couple of months, why it might make sense for you to uh, as a lender to to move forward. Uh, from a, from the own up side, they, as you can see, twenty thousand leads sold uh, to lenders, ninety percent retention rate. So they really have a a high touch service. Talk a little bit about that, and will tell us a little bit more about yourself about about own up as well. Yeah, so I have. Uh, I'm Will. Nice to, nice to meet you all. I have a uh, an interesting uh, sort of career. I've done my. Um, early parts of my career were in um, residential real estate. My whole family's been in uh, in the space for um, a few generations and then did a stint in um, consulting for like five years um, and then pivoted to own up where I wanted to join a, you know, an early stage company that was um, changing up the, the space um, and have done a variety of different things from, sort of a, a glorified uh, loan officer type position to launching uh, our real estate uh, brokerage uh, partnership um, to more recently running our uh, lender partnerships group for the last uh, year or so. Great. Very cool. Uh, so on, on which here on this, this next slide, tell us a little bit about, because it's, Lots of people heard of Lending Tree. Lots of people heard of Bank Radar. These other, like, what's a little bit about like the history of Own Up? What, why they started? Um, you know, what position are they trying to take in the marketplace? Yeah. Um, so Own Up was founded in 2016, I believe. I joined in 2019, um, but it was really born out of um, the two founders. The two sort of uh, functional founders were. Um, led the mortgage uh, mortgage division of a regional bank here in Massachusetts. And they grew that from, um, you know, a hundred million in assets to a little over 3 billion in, in assets. And now it's a top 40 uh, blender in the, in the country. Um, and what they saw was what the sort of most profitable and sort of highest producing in terms of volume group was a very small, sort of in-house uh, consumer direct shop, um, offered a little bit better rates, had sort of more sort of online presence, um, and they were outperforming both on a sort of production, but also on a um, on a sort of profitability standpoint. And so they had initially thought, you know, why don't we sort of charge lenders less for loans and allow customers to get into the consumer direct space that aren't really quite ready to do the whole sort of call center, um, sort of tech stack build out. So own up 1.0 was built as a sort of tech enabled mortgage brokerage for uh, lack of a better sort of explanation. We have home advisors that are licensed um, salespeople. We drive volume to, to them. And then historically we had sort of one product Home advisors would take calls, they would pre-approve people, they would nurture deals, and then they would, via uh, pricing integration into lenders' uh, pricing platforms, we would um, sort of help get lenders lock, what we called locked leads. So it's essentially a, a customer saying, you know, after 45 days of nurturing and, um, you know, a lot of like uh, getting in touch with their real estate agent would sort of shop them out and then get them to a lender. Those fund at like 80%. So it's a sort of one of one in the in the marketplace product, um, but is incredibly sort of human, uh, uh, human driven, obviously. So 
um, there's only so much scale that happens through that channel. So when rates are really low and a lot of it's refi, we we're converting, you know, we were at, at uh, COVID times, we were converting like 70% of all consults that home advisors took were converted to lock leads to lenders. And that works when you only have sort of a small amount of spoilage, but when you have more than that, you need sort of a, an additional sort of layering of, of products. So about two years ago, um, we came up with sort of a, a traditional sort of web lead type product for customers. So, you know, if we have a team of 20 home advisors taking, uh, taking consults and, um, working through things, they need, uh, there needs to be a, a, an additional sort of outlet to customers, um, given, you know, you're going to, uh, a home advisor's calendar is going to be pretty booked up pretty quickly when you're driving as much traffic as, as we do. Um, so anything that is, uh, sort of in excess of the capacity that our home advisors can take turns into something that falls into our sort of non-concierge classification, which is more or less sort of like web leads. Um, and I, I can get into sort of some of our other products, but, um, that's sort of where we are, uh, where we've come from and sort of where we more so where we are today. But I think, um, you know, we have sort of a, a, a hybrid approach to lead generation that is, that is pretty unique in the marketplace. Um, you know, the, the concept of a concierge is, um, you know, there's a couple other shops that, that do it, but not really to the scale that, that we've done it. Um, and then, you know, the product driven sort of web lead type experience is something that, you know, a decent amount of players um, do out in the marketplace. But it's sort of when you combine all of the products, you should get sort of scale and, and high intent traffic uh, sort of all in one. Yeah. Well, that's very helpful. Do you from a traffic standpoint, so to, to kind of help understand where do you how do you generate traffic? Is it, is it organic? Is it blog posts? Is it paid ads? What, what is the, what's the method there just so people can, you know, for some, some other places, it's a little bit more clear for, for you guys to, to define that it might be helpful. Yeah. So we have sort of a multi, uh, channel approach. We have, um, uh, historically it was all sort of, uh, paid ad organic, um, and that's still sort of probably 70% of our overall traffic is um, sort of like what we call own up branded traffic. Um, and we have sort of a, a, a mafia of micro influencers that are sort of out, out and about. We do a lot of Facebook, Google, Instagram. Um, we, in our last round of funding, real.com was one of our bigger um, investors. So we have a r relationship there. Um, we do small amounts with different sort of aggregators, um, but it's a pretty it's a pretty diverse sort of spread of, of traffic. But the core sort of portion of it is sort of own up branded, and typically that's what performs best. Got it. Cool. Well, let's this slide here where you're talking about. I look. It's, it's a, it looks like the three different types of experience that someone can expect. Um, touch on those and then we can kind of dive into, uh, you know, maybe each, each, each section of those, of those leads. Yeah. Um, so I can go, go through this slide and then we can kind of pivot to, to the, to the next one, I believe that has the sort of core of what m most lenders will be sort of interested in. Um, but so concierge and non-concierge, concierge, I would just think about as something that's touched a, a human. So. A home advisor or a licensed sales person has spoken to the customer for, you know, ranging from 20 to 45 minutes. Um, and then non-concierge would be really anything that is uh, sort of web web lead focused. So uh, product driven um, based on sort of questionnaire flows that probably isn't all that new to this crowd. Um, lead distribution. So th this is one of the big pushes that we've had. Um, and I believe we'll formally launch it in Q1. But our main goal is to say we want to be able to sort of agree on a cost per milestone with our lenders and then sort of put in a price guarantee. So we're 
we've been running models for really the last 12 months and we're, it's getting smarter, but we need more volume to, to go through it, more reporting. But in a not so distant future, we want to be able to say, hey, if you spend 50 grand with us, we're going to guarantee that you're going to get a cost per whatever it is, app, pre-approval, lock, mm. fund of X. Um, and our uh, initial work has been all around sort of like when a lead hits our questionnaire funnel, what do we deem the value of it? You know, there's, I would say the closest thing to something like that right now is probably bank rates, um, sort of variable pricing structure. You know, some lenders will get a lead for, you know, 250 bucks and some will get something for 30 bucks. And it's driven typically off of like something like six to eight characteristics, but it's all sort of like, it's more static than anything. Um, and goes off of, um, sort of more lead qualification stuff and not uh, not as much sort of like consumer behavior stuff, which is really the crux of what we've been sort of working on. So that's <clears throat> that's one big thing that we've been um, excited about. And then um, the sort of tech that implements the ability to drive the concierge and non-concierge um, sort of integrations and uh, customer flows are just things that we've sort of fine-tuned over the years. Got it. So as we as we drive in here, um, speak of that you get the unique suite for for those different types. So you can speak, you can talk about, hey, this is the most high intent lead down to uh, to to where you think that would go. Yeah. So, um, like I said, the <clears throat> it, it might make sense to just jump to the next slide because I sort of yeah. built up the next one that has. Um, sort of a more robust set, but th th this is how I think about our sort of total suite of traffic. Um, so concierge, like I said, anything that touches a human, you know, we have a sales team that's been with us for, a lot of them have been with us for, you know, three plus years um, and, you know, really, really good group. Um, and I think that is what sort of enables the sort of highest intent traffic coming from them. You know, I think, it's hard to find the balance between driving volume and creating an intent, sort of like uh, putting too many filters on things that limits the amount of traffic that goes through. Um, but I think there is definitely a demand for, in the mortgage space with something so high consideration, customers want the ability to have sort of like an unbiased person as sort of like a liaison into the right lender. You know, I think probably rate tables are probably the closest thing to really good intent filtering um, to allow for sort of best performance. Um, but even better than that is a human communicating with a human to let them know what they want to do. So yeah. our, lock, our locked leads convert from the time that they go to a lender to close at an 80% clip. So typically people are happy with like whatever, four or 5%. Off a of rate data, so you can see how this is with many magnitudes greater than that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, but on on that one, so we're talking about lock leads. So the experience that the lender can ex expect is this lead has come in from from somewhere on on your is interacted with your site. They've actually talked to, had a deep conversation, 20, 30 minute conversation with 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 an advisor. And now that advisor is going to match them up, essentially hand them off, whether it's a warm handoff phone call, they're going to match them up with that lender. And then the lender is going to take, take it from there to get them across the finish line, which is essentially lock in the rate and, you know, process the loan. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So the, the, uh, lender experience is they only, they only, uh, get exposed to the customer once they've chosen the rate that they want and are using to move forward. And then at that point, it's sort of customer driven. They select like the, like a lock request button, and then it goes directly into, into the as they get a PDF of all of the different variations of what they want. But we have pricing integrations too um, w with the lenders. And then we also have every fee that they charge on a loan estimate. So we can, we can show a customer a full sort of loan estimate equivalent um, as opposed to just sort of a rate table that has a rate and how many points they're paying. 
Yeah. So it's a, yeah, it's, it's, it seems like for the customer. Yeah, it seems like a great experience for the customer. And if you're if you're a lender and you're just kind of tired of chasing trigger leads, or you're you're you've got a budget and and you just want to try something different that's much more high intent, this would be uh, the concierge seems to be a, a good option. Uh, and, and it's not so much you know you you kind of take the chase out of it. It's more it's it's much more of a warm intro. So uh, and then these non the non concierge. So, so I can maybe, so that I understand it is that is someone that is a a web lead comes through maybe an eight to 10 questionnaire form. Is that right? Yep. Cool. And then that is your, you guys are trying to do a little AI, getting some AI with, with, with doing some scrubbing that is not in production yet, but that's what you're working on. And then, but those leads are still eligible they are then matched up with a lender that would participate with, with own up. Is that right? Yeah, that, that that's correct. So all the, the same traffic that goes to web leads versus one of these other channels, it's the same traffic. It's just the biggest driver. Is it just a capacity play? Like the home advisor team gets booked up, you know, they're booked up like four days into it. Got it. Advance, and then it's like, if we allow people to book further and further and further, it's just, uh, the show rate on consults is uh, exponentially lower. Got it. Got it. Got it. That makes sense. So it's a, it's coming from the same lead source, same traffic source. It's just uh, it's overflow. Cool. Um, so at we're gonna if you have any questions as we go through the slides, uh, feel free throw those in chat, and we'll stop maybe after this next slide, answer some questions that you have. Um, and happy to, to, to walk through that. So, Will, if you see any, any, any questions in chat, feel free to, to stop and we can, we can talk about that. So, yeah, this one on the, on the, uh, the, the distribution for AI, let's, let's, let's walk through this one. Yeah, so th this is just sort of like a sort of decision tree to um, show how sort of our, our traffic is sort of bifurcated. Um, but uh, the questionnaire is sort of the initial funnel. So any traffic that we get sent is is always sort of landing on um on our landing page and then at that point it's sort of a decision tree of is it something that the concierge team has the the time for um and is it something that the customer wants i.e are they choosing to schedule a consult with with the home advisor or are they choosing to go directly you know i think there's sort of two schools of thought about um our services, you know, I think sometimes there's the the thought of humans, you know, if you interject another party, am I going to, am I paying more essentially, you know, like if, if you're there, can I just go directly to the lender and get a better outcome? The answer to that is sort of dependent on, on who you're, who you're sold to, you know, like you, if you're mm -hmm. just a lead, maybe you end up in a different channel than if you're, going to our concierge group and all the lenders on our concierge group are um sort of priced price thinly you know like bank uh, bank uh, uh rate table type players you know versus you know mm -hmm. maybe uh, a retail shop that's buying buying a small amount of realtor.com leads you know the the customer outcome is going to be drastically different from one to the to the next you know so um we always give the customer the ability to sort of choose of which which route they're going um and then at that point concierge is sort of either um either people that were sort of looking to lock pre-approve or to give them sort of like a um a rate table type experience with a with a human touch so concierge can drive lock leads it can drive pre-approval leads and it can drive sort of like a, a warm transfer type lead um, and then out of non-concierge, you're going to get your sort of like web lead type offering. Um, Got it. All of that. Uh, concierge, anything that comes out of concierge is typically static priced. We don't have a single lender that participates on concierge that has a budget. It sort of pays for itself and people have sort of an insatiable appetite for it. Um, and then non-concierge, sort of, uh, which is true of sort of the whole... Uh, ecosystem is, you know, leads are going to be priced accordingly based on, you know, 
how, how much do they cost to acquire and what is the sort of cost per milestone that a lender and buyer is looking to accomplish. Got it. So the, you're saying that the concierge leads are just people will pay. There is no kind of budget. There's a budget, but there isn't a cost per concierge. They're just taking those leads because they know that they close at a very high rate. Is that is that right? Yeah. So that there to be clear, to be clear that there is a cost. Uh, you know, it, nothing's free. Yeah. But yes, ev everyone pays the exact same amount on the concierge, and not a single one of our Got it. participates on that side of the house. Got as, it as a budget. Got it. Got it. That makes sense. So let's pause. Uh, any any questions in the in there? Uh, looks like there's two questions. Um, we have these are leaf, uh, refi leads or purchase. So the answer to that question is we pretty much mirror the the market. Um, so in COVID times when rates were really low, we were probably eighty five percent refi, fifteen percent purchase, and now we're probably ninety one or ninety two percent purchase, and you know uh, eight or nine percent refi. And then. Sean asked, is Own Up taking on new brokers? Um, so we have a variety of different offerings and it sort of depends on uh, sort of where we have the most need and, and whatnot, but we're always looking for, um, we're always looking for new lenders that sort of match up with the sort of offerings that, that we that we have. And I would say the, the lenders that are most, uh, most valuable to us transparently are ones that want to participate sort of across the across the board sort of like web lead uh and then sort of something coming out of concierge whether it's sort of like a real type experience or pre-approval or locked um you know we're, we're pretty big believers of sort of buying the bundle and you know hopefully getting best in class performance got it so here we're looking at looks like lead gen with captive mortgage independent lead gen. So um, tell us about what you guys see here in, in the numbers. Yeah, I mean, I think I think this is one um, just sort of like high level general uh, sort of concept here. We we do not have a, a mortgage company. You know, we we have no um, we have to no desire to get into that space. So any traffic that comes to us is going back to our lender network it's just going to come through at some different product suite um with the um obviously higher volume coming through sort of web leads just because the you know there's there's more of them and less sort of human interaction but um anything that we are sort of spending to get is going back to the same audience that um that, that we're looking to so, you know, i think an example of what what we're talking about here is you know, if you're you know, buying from like Zillow or something like that, like Zillow Home Loans is going to eat first, and then every other lender is going to eat second. With mm -hmm. us, everyone eats at the same time. You know, we we want we want as many of our lenders to be on sort of all three products as possible. Everyone's getting the sort of same benefit across the board, so there's no sort of adverse selection happening, and it's the traffic that um one lender get is getting should be the same as the next and you know we don't want to be seen as sort of like skimming for, from the top which is yeah. something that traditionally happens in marketplaces yep that's good to point out and we've seen we're definitely seeing more and more of that on the with the larger the larger players uh so as we as we talk about What's the next step? So if someone's interested, um, I guess, do you have, a, is it a budget range? Is it a price range? Like, how do you like to, to kind of introduce, uh, you know, the next steps for people to, to better understand? Do they even have the budget to, to, to talk to you guys? Yeah. I mean, we have, um, we've never really set a formal minimum. Um, you know, I think I'm a believer of, starting small and proving and fine tuning, you know, is to get 
lenders on board, the lot, you know, I'm less interested in someone joining and spending 50 grand a month and then churning the next month. I'd rather someone mm -hmm. spend five grand and sort of sort things out, fine tune the process and sort of then, then stay on with us. So I would say, you know, our, our smallest currently spends 7,500, but we could potentially go lower and then our highest spends, um, 300,000. So there's a pretty big range. Got it. But the core group of lenders spend 45 or 50 grand um, on uh, a combo of uh, typically with web leads. There, I don't look at budget from the concierge side because, like I said, no one has a cap for that. Yeah. So they, if if they sign up with, with Own Up, they're looking at they're looking at two lead types. You're looking at um, the concierge and then the web leads. That's what you guys are 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 uh, matching them up with. They have a they have a blend of that. Uh, maybe a little bit of both. Maybe more of one or the other. Uh, they can kind of work with you on budget. They could start smaller and grow. And what's the setup from from a time to let's say that someone you know reaches out to you November first. Typically, what does it take to get up and running and, and like to get started with with you? Yeah, so we have um, for we have sort of two two contracts. One's uh, concierge based and one's non concierge based. We're looking to hopefully blend those two together. Um, but I would say from start to finish, it's typically you know um, typically around two weeks once you have the you know, legal, do their review. Um, and then the integration stuff for into CRMs is probably like, um, probably a two day process uh, from the time that we have the posting mm -hmm. URL and the sort of mapping documentation. Um, and then the sort of thing that takes longest outside of the contract is just the um, pricing integration because we get all the lenders fees um, so that they can be sort of shown apples to apples and not just on a sort of late basis. Got it. And that is the pricing integration, something that you work with like industry pricing engines, or do you have something that you connect high, just high level? It doesn't have to, you have to go in the weeds, but if someone's yeah. using Optimal Blue, how do, how do you work with that? Yeah. So we have, uh, we have off the shelf integrations for Optimal Blue and MoreTech right now. We have, uh, yeah. we have plans to add a, a few others like the polys of the world that uh, seems like more, more shops are sort of moving towards, but um, for either of the two sort of core OB, more tech, um, those are pretty much off the shelf for us. Okay, very cool. Um, just as we kind of wrap up on 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 our webinar is, we always we always kind of finish with consumer preferences, and it's just a reminder to the to the people that are on the call is. The shopping, the, the, the experience, just like we'll talk about at the very beginning was, you know, this, this, the retail space, not that it's dying, it's blending into uh, that consumer direct experience. So you kind of have to start leaning into uh, the, the consumer direct experience. What does that look like on your website? What does that look like with your realtor or your partnerships? What does it look like where you're spending your money uh, for advertising? So places like Own Up are a great place to learn, a great place to, to spend some money to learn about that experience. So knowing that the consumer is going to be pushing online, you got to be involved in that. Um, what, what we see, we continue to see is your best converting leads are the ones that, that come to your website. So if you're buying leads and people see your logo and they come to your website, that's great. You're going to convert more of those leads. Um, and I think really the, the 2023 goal, because it's shifted so much, you know, the, the market is what it is. If, if when we're talking about website and what can you do with your, with your actual website from an advertising standpoint is just, can you get people on your, on your website longer? Do you have engaging videos, blogs? Do you have engaging rates, rate tables on your website that makes it much more sticky? It gives them a reason to come back. So those are, you know, when you think about from a banking bridge side of things, you know, from a, uh, the 2023 consumer. Will, is there anything that you've seen in like the last six months from just the trend you know, other than 92% purchase or you know, essentially 100? What else do you guys, what are you talking about 
in your meetings with kind of the trends or consumer that you want that you could share? Yeah, I mean, I think the um, similar to how it took uh, customers a long time to realize they weren't getting a 2% rate, they were getting a 5% rate. I think it took an equal amount of time for lenders to realize that there was an adjustment to the time expectation for a cost per fund or a cost per mm. uh, lock. Um, and I think the, the biggest shops are primarily focused on what is a, what's an appropriate cost per pre-approval and then projecting how many of my pre-approvals am I going to convert and using that as mm -hmm. the proxy to um, hold lead generators accountable to um, in sort of as close to real time as possible because you know no one wants to blindly spend a ton of money and wait for six or nine months to happen, but um, you know waiting for same month conversion for you know a lot of spend is also not realistic. So that that is probably one of the biggest sort of trends that we've seen is just that things are taking a little bit longer to convert and you know the focus on how are we evaluating sort of best in class performance is um, is really best by looking at sort of like what's the what's the proxy up front because it's it shouldn't be shouldn't be app or credit pool because that's you know you're going to get some adverse selection on people with really low credit or no assets um, mm -hmm. that app at a high rate um, but looking at locked is sort of unrealistic a little bit. Um, so. Pre-approval seems to be sort of like the, the, the perfect medium that um, allows for both sides of the sort of uh, transaction between sort of sellers of leads and buyers of leads to sort of agree on what's what's good value. Yeah, I agree with that. It's, it's definitely a realistic metric uh, to, to have out there. So thanks for sharing that. If we have folks on the call that are interested they can reach out to you directly. Is that is that the best way to do it? Yep, yep. Myself and uh, the COO, Mike Tassoni, helps out a little bit, but primarily uh, myself. Great. And that's it's will.donovan at, at ownup.com. Uh, you can always reach out to to myself and I can introduce you to Will if you're, if you're having trouble connecting. Uh, so thanks everybody for participating today. Anything, anything in the questions there? Before we wrap it up uh is the budget paid up front by the broker prior to settlement or is the budget ultimately what is paid to own up when a loan closes basically i want to know if there are any up front this. no so on, on none of our products is there sort of an upfront um an upfront fee it's all uh it's all just a sort of a, on a per lead basis um, Cool. All right. Thanks, gang. We'll catch you on the next one in November and uh, continue to bring in some new interesting lead partners and, and, and educate our community. So we'll talk then. Thanks. Thanks, awesome. Will. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, everyone.